The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. There aren't very many people that walk across the state with their belongings on their back. This is my way of learning what Texas is like. Even though you can be sitting in the campground with 50 other campers, you only walk 100 yards and you're gonna be all alone in the woods. I haven't run the numbers lately, but I'm guessing we're pushing 200,000 acres. Texas Parks and Wildlife a television series for all outdoors. A lot of people stop when they see me on the road. Why are you walking? And they offer me a ride, and I have to turn them down. One guy says, y you mean you're doing this on purpose? It's not a race, it's not a program, it's, it's more like a lifestyle. This is, this is just what I want to be doing. Dave Roberts is out for a walk. He has been for months. So I'm a little more than three months since I left New Orleans. Dave is walking to New Mexico, taking in miles of Texas along the way. That looks like a watermelon from here. Palmetto is my 26th state park. I've gone about 2,200 miles since New Orleans. So I'm more than halfway through the state of Texas. One guy says, well, you know, there's a bus. You can just take a bus to El Paso. So he didn't get it. I think I'd rather walk. I don't want to just sit home and play card games on the computer and raid a refrigerator every 10 minutes and get fat and lazy. I want to be outdoors. I want to breathe unfiltered air. I want this, the weather to affect me. I want to meet people I've never met. I want to go places I've never been. And that's the lifestyle that I've chosen for myself. Since I left New Orleans, I've used up five pairs of shoes and I'm ready for my sixth. So I'll, I'll get a pair in one of these towns. This is the kind I normally get right here, but they don't have my size. They look like they'll work. Ten bucks. <laughs> I'm buying ten dollar <laughs> shoes. Okay, now I need to get a new pair of insoles. They last about 400 miles per pair. They were getting a little thin on the bottom. I just didn't want to feel the road under my feet, and so I bought a new pair of shoes. You stay. <laughs> Thank you. They're comfortable, they work, and I'm happy as a clam. Using up shoes traversing Texas on foot may sound extreme, but this is just one in a series of outdoor adventures for Dave. I'm weaving across America. But I didn't start out with that in mind. It just happened one step at a time, and it all started. I hiked the Appalachian Trail. I was just gonna hike the trail and go home. But it was such an awesome experience, I didn't want it to stop. And when I got to Maine, I rode my bicycle to Florida, and then I hiked the Florida Trail. And so I find I'm zigzagging across the country. Somewhere in Florida, I got the idea that I think I'll paddle down the Mississippi River. So how do I get to Minnesota? I'll ride my bike. Hiking, biking, and paddling. This summer, I paddled down the Mississippi River. So I had to get from New Orleans to New Mexico. So how do you, how do you get there? Well, you, you walk across Texas. And so that's what I'm doing. 
I'm visiting state parks. And right now I'm in Lockhart, Texas. And uh, this is my 27th one, I think. I told some of my friends, oh, I'm gonna walk across Texas. And they said, why Texas? You know, like, like te they think Texas is just desert. And I said, well, I looked at the website and it looks to me like there's a lot more than just desert out there. Your campsite, there's more trails. That Visiting go up. state parks has made my trip much more interesting. You're all set. Okay, well, thank you very I've much. I've met some of the most warm hearted people I've ever met in Louisiana and Texas. Okay, I made a spreadsheet at 15 miles a day. How many state parks can I do? And it came out to 23 state parks. When I got to Tyler, I was like a week and a half ahead of schedule. I was doing 23 miles a day, not 15. So far, I've done uh, Village Creek, Martin Dyes, Mission Tejas, Martin Creek, Tyler, Dangerfield, Bob Sandlin, Cooper, Bonham, Eisenhower, Ray Roberts, Richardson, Possum Kingdom, Mineral Wells, Dinosaur Valley, <laughs> Cleburne, Whitney, Meridian, Mother Neff, Colorado Bend, um, Inks Lake, Enchanted Rock, McKinney Falls, Bastrop, Fisher, Palmetto, and Lockhart. And I have um, 13 to go, something like that. It's my tent. This is my sleeping pad. This is my food. That's the heavy one. It's my sleeping bag. And this is my dry clothing. And that's it. This is the fourth tent I've had in two years. One was lost, one was stolen, one was melted in a dryer. Now I have this one. My budget is $20 a day. For a lot of people, getting by isn't really enough. The attitude is more important than the gear. I put all my stuff in it and then I'm ready to have lunch and take a walk. I don't have a knife, so I cut my cheese like this. Put on my salsa. I was having three of these for lunch a day and realized that I was still hungry, and so now I have four. <laughs> I have a saying if everything goes according to plan, you're not having an adventure yet. <laughs> it's really blowing. Two months and one pair of shoes later, Dave is in far west Texas. This is uh, quite a headwind we got here today. He's back on the road after a medical timeout. I had a pain in my chest, went to the doctor, and he suggested I go for further checkup. So I went home to do that. The diagnosis, heartburn. There's nothing wrong with me. Physically, I'm in good shape, but I needed to change my diet, and I'm glad I did that. Dave picked up where he left off in Del Rio. After days crossing desert, he is outside Fort Davis. Now I feel assured if I'm out in the middle of nowhere, a thousand miles from the nearest hospital, that I'm okay. And I feel confident to just go and do it at my age. I'm 72. Well, my biggest concern going from here to El Paso is getting enough water. After the pecan orchards, there's really not much water to Van, to Van Horn. Where towns are scarce. I soak them in water. Dave eats dehydrated meals his daughter mails, and what food he can find to fit his budget and backpack. Two boxes of cereal. That's three days. These are going to be my dinners, sandwich bags. My pack weighs 13 pounds plus food and water four days worth of food, that's 10 pounds right there. This is heavy too, but you gotta eat. <laughs> well, it's gonna be 28.92. That's not bad. There you go. Wish you good luck. Thanks a lot. Here I go. Ooh, this is heavy now. Not surprisingly, Dave skips convenience for primitive camping. In a way, I'm out here to escape the hubbub, 
and the busyness of the modern world. I can live in that world, but I prefer this. It's absolutely beautiful. You can just see forever up here. It took me an hour and a half to get up here, but it was worth it. 20 or 25 years ago, I had a dream. In my dream, I died and I went to heaven. St. Peter uh, looks at me and he looks down at his book and he looks at me again and he says, uh, why didn't you take advantage of what they had to offer down there? End of dream. And so I woke up and I said, wow, that's pretty powerful. So not long after that, um, I quit my job and I decided that I was going to uh, spend the rest of my life volunteering. So I joined the Peace Corps. A mountaintop seems like the perfect place to contemplate the next adventure. My next adventure is to uh, hike the Continental Divide Trail, which goes from Mexico to Canada. The Triple Crown is the Appalachian Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, and the Pacific Crest Trail. I've already done the AT, plan it to do the CDT this summer. And if I can do the Pacific Crest Trail, then that's the Triple Crown. Nobody that I know has ever done the Triple Crown entirely after the age of 70. So that'll be my claim to fame for what it's worth. <laughs>We go from about 1,700 feet and then rise up another 400 feet. And throughout that, you have canyons and bluffs uh, that provide some of the best pictures of the hill country you're ever going to see. Hey, Sean. Oh, God. Yeah, I haven't seen this many in one place before. They're hovering around the feeder, trying to find a hole to put their little beak in. South Lana River has four bird blinds. They all have a water feature. There's a bunting. 
and so you can always count on seeing a lot of bird activity. There's the jay over there on the feeder again. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, tons of birds. <laughs> For the kids, there's a number of opportunities where you can hop in the tube, float for two, two and a half hours down the South Lima River and get back out and do it again. Definitely the hidden gem uh, out there. Yeah. It's got a small little chute area. Uh, the current's not too fast. Uh, great for children that are like 12 and under that want to float a river that's not too hectic. I consider it really safe for children, uh, so that's pretty much why we really come here. You don't often think about the kind of bugs that live in the river. Give it. Sweep it against the plants and then dump it into your bucket, okay? The bug! We got a bug! We caught something. It's neat for the kids to get out and play in the water as well as find out about the different bugs that live in the water. Look at this. I got a beetle. Any activity there in nature and they're discovering things. They hold it real flat, there you go. It's priceless though, really, to see them all get excited about everything. The entire park is great for hiking and biking trails. Uh, anytime you want to hop on your mountain bike, you have over 25 miles of trails. I like the mountain bike back here because there's not a lot of other people back here. 2,100 acres is a lot of land to go play around on a mountain bike. It's nice that as soon as you get back here in the backcountry with your bike, you really don't hear anything but birds in the wind. Y'all ready to eat? It's not a big park, you know, you're not going to have party crowds out here, and it's a very family oriented park, you know, and it's quiet too. We are uh, an international dark sky park. Those little spots are moons. If we're having a star party, uh, people can come. We have an interpretive ranger that will uh, show you all the constellations of the sky. We go to our parks, uh, there's that primitive feel. And even though you can be sitting in the campground with 50 other campers, you only walk 100 yards and you're going to be all alone in the woods. And that's what makes it special, because there is space to be had out here. This is the Packer Channel. We're on the north side. My favorite spot. To me, this is one of the most natural places I can be, you know, in the ocean, in the water, at the beach. I feel like this is such a luxury. I don't know how many times I just give thanks. It's like a small surf community out here. It's a place you can come and just kind of relax and just get away from everyday, you know, struggles or problems that you might deal with. You can come out here and be yourself. It's, it's a real friendly crowd. It's good for any age. There's, there's people out here that are 70 years old and, and all the way from kids out here that are, you know, five years old. And uh, you just come out here and, and, you know, have some fun and catch some waves. For me, surfing is, is the way that I connect with nature and with myself. It's really important to connect body, mind, spirit. There's something about surfing that really does that for, for me and I think for a lot of people. Out here, we're all equal. We're all doing the same thing. We're after the same goals. There's nothing. It's, it's you and, and nature and, and, uh, and your freedom and, and it doesn't matter what color you are or, or how much money's in your bank account or, or, or anything. You're out here with people of all walks of life, just killing it.
This is my escape into nature and to connect and to leave all your baggage at the beach and you just let that stuff go. It's kind of like uh, Texas Point Break. When we think of Texas, we think of wide open spaces, we think of vast forests, we think of mountains off in the distance, we think of the Milky Way coming out at night. And we're losing our sense of place as we see that landscape change. And the, and the simple fact is that Texas, the state of Texas, is losing working lands faster than any other state in the nation. We're seeing land converted from open space to urban uses and suburban uses and commercial uses faster than we ever have in history. Less than 5% of the land in Texas is public property, open for everyone to enjoy. Ted Hollingsworth runs the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's Land Conservation Program. He considers it a calling to find new property to preserve. Our mission really is, you know, those children that we see that are here from probably from some urban area and, and, and some of them are maybe seeing an alligator for the first time, and that's really important, and, and I get that. Okay. But my personal bias is that I wanna make sure that alligator has a place to live, and it has enough space that it can grow to be 12 or 13 or 14 feet long. And one of the ways that we can really help offset this loss of land and loss of conservation is by land acquisition. When I became the director of the land conservation program, not only did we not get appropriated a single dime in, in state money for land acquisition, but we were specifically given no authority to use state money to acquire land, which meant that if you wrote me a check for a million dollars and you said, Ted, please add land to Brazos Bend State Park, it was worthless. Thankfully, things have changed. In the past 20 years, more state and federal money has been freed up to buy land. And it's now the law in Texas that several million dollars from the sporting goods sales tax is set aside every year for land acquisition. Um, fortunately, things have changed a lot in the last 20 years. There's more funding available. There's more state funds available to match the federal funds. We have more opportunities than, than ever. Ted Hollingsworth has seized those opportunities, helping to ensure 90% of Texans are now within an hour's drive of public outdoor spaces. Maybe my favorite would be Palo Pinto Mountains State Park. Powderhorn, of course, you know, was, had a lot of partners and a lot of players. We were blessed to add 304 acres to this park a couple of years ago. So this land acquisition that we have out here is going to allow us to expand not just campsites, not just group sites, uh, but also expand the diversity of what we have to offer. In the 18 years, that uh, 17 years I've been director of the program, we've averaged right at 10,000 acres a year added to the department's lands wildlife management areas, coastal management areas, state parks. I haven't run the numbers lately, but I'm guessing we're pushing 200,000 acres. My wife spent her entire career as a first grade teacher, as an elementary school teacher. What's important to her is that the children, you know, get away from these things and, and have a relationship, understand their place in the world. What's important to me is that we preserve the place in the world so that her children have access to it. So it really means a lot to us to be able to see these places and especially see the children come and have that out of the classroom experience.
This series is supported in part by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, conserving the wild things and wild places of Texas thanks to members across the state. Additional funding is provided by Toyota. Your local Toyota dealers are proud to support outdoor recreation and conservation in Texas. Toyota, let's go places.